Hey guys. So yeah, obviously the big thing to talk about with this episode is that we see a fight. We see a fight like beginning to like getting set up between Nami and Usopp versus Ulti and P Ulti. And honestly, even though even though even though the extent to which we got Nami versus Ulti was really just a setup for the fight itself to come, I'm still really glad and excited that that that, that we're getting this that we're getting this kind of a fight in itself because. When it comes to One Piece specifically, I've always been attached to the fights that revolve around the underdog characters in the crew, like Nami, Usopp, Chopper, all that stuff. Whereas the ones with the main three, Us you know, Luffy, Luffy, Zoro, and and Sanji, are the like are the coup de grace, the cherry on top kind of thing in order in order to top in order in order to like top everything off as it were. And in the case of this coming up upcoming fight between Ulti versus Nami, I think I'm I'm really going to one thing I know I'm going to appreciate is is just a lot I think I'm going to appreciate this fight a lot more now than I probably did in the manga. Simply because to me this feels like the first real fight that the series Anoda has given Nami in a long while. And I understand why, because she is the navigator and because of that fact you can't afford to put her into too many too much of a life-threatening situation like th that'll kill her but i just love the idea of nami getting like an actual real moment to shine and show what she's capable of i mean i i i mean i do want to give her credit for what she did against big mom she definitely went all out there but th that was more of a team effort type scenario but as far as like a true one-on-one -on -one fights nami hasn't really gotten that that particular that particular that particular moment in the series to shine again like I, the last time i remember her having a fight like that was way back in any slotty against Khalifas. beyond that she hasn't really gotten like that moment again so seeing her have that chance to at a real 1v1 fight again again with ulti is is just going to be really satisfying to watch honestly now, with that said, this episode is the beginning of an unfortunate annoyance in this section of Wano moving forward, which is a poo. Like, what do you see a poo doing in this episode? All his little scheming, all the little things he does in this episode, all his little tricks, that's basically a poo for the entirety of Wano beyond this point, which I'm sure Oda is using all these, mo all these moments and just a poo as a character in general to set something up in the future. But as is currently, the only purpose this character serves is to cause mayhem, mayhem and basically troll characters left and right, which is funny to a, up to a certain point, but it's funny but only up to a certain point before it got annoying as fuck. And yeah, having to relive these moments with Pooh now that there's a voice to accompany that annoyance is going to be painful to sit through. I'm just saying it outright. Like, Apu is like... Again, he still has the occasional funny bit, but as a whole, he's like, no, I I hate you, get out of my sight kind of thing. Actually, I, I think it's, and actually, I'm, I'm actually going to be fair here. I think it's one of the few times where, from my personal experience, I've kind of liked the dub actor of Apu slight, slightly more than the Japanese Seiyu, because the dub actor for Apu is... Even though the dub actor who got replaced because the old actor died, the dub actor is sli is slightly less annoying than the Seiyu actors, and that's saying a lot, honestly. Um, on the flip side of that, though, I do like how we get a little bit more insight into Drake's mindset, and that despite technically still being a member of the Navy, he's not against like go doing things in unconventional ways, and through his trust in what Kobe has said about Luffy, about Luffy, about Luffy, he, Drake ultimately chooses to put his trust in the ladder, which also does show just how much of a perfect fit Sword was for him, as it, it kind of gave him a little bit more freedom to actually make those choices. Also, I'm convinced more than ever before at this point in time that the one running sword is Aokiji because just the fact that he and Drake are basically doing the same thing of inter integrating themselves into a young into a Yonko's crew into a into in, in into a Yonko's crew it does it does start to add up but at the same time I'm starting to wonder just how much 
control the Navy act- Navy themselves has over S.W.O.R.D. because Drake, one interesting line of dialogue is that Drake says if he reveals his identity, they they they, they, they will both, they'll be doomed to be enemies no matter what. And that kind of, but that, that to me, that kind of sounds like something on a bit more of a high, that says that the sword is operating on a bit more of a higher level of the government, of the government's powers, more than just the Navy. Like, it's it's operating sort of on that level of like, a, of, of, a, of more just like, of more the, like the chief and staff in, ch- in charge of the government or something like that, like 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 pretty much Kong or something like that, like they like they serve under Kong or something like that. I don't know, but yet it's starting to feel like, even though Sword is technically part of the Navy, they're not necessarily taking orders from the Navy or something like that, which would also make sense considering Sword is technically like a, a spy agency or whatnot. But yeah, I'll be. I really need to know exactly what like how. how what, what their operation quote on this whole thing is like what who they serve in the in the government kind of thing um even more than that though one thing i really love about this episode is how drake doesn't just get accepted with open arms as an ally he, he, honestly even by luffy like he actually needs to prove himself and 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 and, and, and even, even though luffy did say yeah you can become our ally it's tech it was weird kind of one of those weird technical things where even though luffy said that he he also kind of said he, he he said it in a way where he said that Drake can be his ally, but he also prefaced it with the caveat of saying that it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really matter anyway because he's he, he's gonna take down Kaido re- regardless. Like a very subtle like it's sort of the way Luffy said that is sort of his a very subtle way of saying if you get in my way then I'll just I'll just take you out along with Kaido. Like yeah he's like. Uh, you're you can be an ally, but I don't really it. I'll just don't get in my way, kind of thing. I, I kind of like that, as it shows that Luffy has kind of has grown. He's he's not entirely trusting of of people who say they want to be allies and whatnot. And and of course, Zoro was still the one who felt he had to put Drake through his paces before accepting it. It's showing from showing that for how much which does go towards showing just how much he trusts Luffy, that for how much he trusts Luffy, he all, Zoro has also taken up much more of a responsibility in protecting him, showing what a lot of people are saying about Zoro nowadays, which is he's having, which is Zoro is truly, has truly stepped into his own as like Luffy's first mate, vice captain, whatever. It, like it, it shows that that level of commitment to Luffy at this point. Although it is hilarious how it was through their like through their mutual hatred for a poo that Zoro accepted Drake as an ally. Like it wasn't until they they can that where a poo finally jumped at the picture that it's like, yeah, I hate this guy. Let's team up. Let's be allies. Kind of shit. Like that that, that was kind of hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, one thing I also like is how even though Luffy and Kobe haven't seen each other yet in the post time skip, the ster- the series is still very much giving us moments like the flashback in this episode of of Cody praising Luffy to Drake that is building upon their relationship and giving us an idea of what that dynamic may look like in the future when we when we go head first into the into the throne wars when 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 when, it, when the throne wars are going to happen then it will draw all these different factions and players into it. it just little moments like that really give us an idea of just where Kobe and Luffy will be standing when when shit really does start hitting the fan. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, analyst control. Be sure to hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of Me, signing off. Later, everyone.